Hey, what's up guys? We're back doing another video. Um, this one's going to be about the MCV or AIS removal on my Yamaha Virago XV700. I stole this from uh, viragotechforum.com if you guys want to check that out. They have some pretty neat stuff. This guy uh, is by uh, Draper84. Took some of his uh, information and we're going to go put go ahead and put in a video. Um, some of these things I will put on the description, so make sure you guys read the description. Um, I may switch it up a little bit and just do the way uh, I was thinking of doing it. So here we go. We're going to be using some pliers, a 10 millimeter socket, a 5 millimeter um, hex, a ratchet, and needle nose pliers. So first things first, we're going to start on our left side. Um, remove the bolt under the left side bug eye shiny silver thing where your left knee would be if you are riding the bike so we're gonna go ahead and take off this little bolt right here it's right under it and let's go ahead and do that There you go. Remove the silver cover by pulling out and up. Just like that. Step number three, remove the hex bolt holding the MCV or AIS plate on the motorcycle. One on the top right and one on the top left. So those two right there. Just like that, should be loose. Heard a ding or something that fell off. It's this piece right here. This guy goes like this. If you guys want to put the cap back, if not, uh, you guys could just find it and put it away somewhere. But it goes right here. At this time, you will be able to access the clamps and vacuum lines that go into the MCV or AIS unit. Begin. To remove these clamps. Let's get my needle nose. Just like that. like that. We removed the hoses from the MCV. Uh, that was step number five is to remove these from the MCV. Let's go ahead and skip to number six. Uh, take the small vacuum hose coming from the T right here. I'll show you in a better picture right now. Um, this small hose goes to the pressure sensor that controls the timing of motorcycles. Here, let's go ahead and move the camera. Here's the T right here. We're gonna go ahead and remove this. If I can get it. <laughs> There you go. Just like that. Off the T. The T's right there. Number seven has a few steps. 
uh, we got to remove these guys so for that we have to go ahead and remove the air filter so let's go over to the air filter side air filter side we're gonna go ahead and remove it there's two hex screws there's one right there in this corner and the other one in this corner and uh, we also have the Phillips right in here and we're gonna go ahead and remove that now hopefully my hands don't get in the way just notice in my other videos I get my hands in the way a lot so here we go got one screw out and we're removing the air filter so we can get to the other hoses a lot better and uh yeah so here's our Phillips back here oops butterfingers we open that clamp up just a bit slide down don't mind that one and there it is, there's our clamp, put our Phillips. Also, I dropped the piece, and let me show you what it is. It's this piece right here. Let me focus it, okay. Make sure you don't lose this, because that goes in your air filter with that bolt, and it goes right on top left tap right sorry just like that it is removing the rest of the hoses so the hoses right here on the manifold and we're gonna go ahead and remove these clamps just like that just like that It should look like this. Get a closer look. Just like right here. These two right here. We're gonna go ahead. Well, you can either close a larger one and use a thinner one, or close them both and use the rear uh, nipples from the manifold. Gas tank on the seat, as you can see, so I can have much more space to work with. You don't have to do that. I have large hands. So I decided to go ahead and um, take off the gas tank and the seat. Um, the next step is to uh, cover the nipples. So here's what I bought at AutoZone. I literally bought this at AutoZone not too long ago. They're vacuum caps. It's an assortment, so it gives you different variety of them. There's some that you can even cut yourself and just figure that out by yourself. And yeah, let's go ahead and cap these two nipples right there. Let's go ahead and cap them. Let's go right there. This one right here. Just like that. Let's go ahead and put on their hose clamps. like that hmm. just like that and yeah, put it more down a little bit That's how it should look. The reason why I blocked these two and not the other one is because instead of throwing a, a whole hose from the petcock to one of these nipples, um, is just to not take a whole hose and try to fish it through and then have a direct shot. I'll show you guys in the next clip. 
that cock right there. I'm going to raise the gas tank just a smidge, just like that. Here's the nipple right here on the rear, like that. And I'm going to set this down. And I'm going to go ahead and measure. Oh. We're gonna go ahead and measure how long we need to cut this hose so it can fit nicely right into our pet cock. So make sure you measure that. It should look something like this. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and measure it and then show you guys in a picture. Go ahead and read what was on the forum. I didn't do this, but I will write down the description as, as well. So. It also says, uh, step number eight, now remove the coil cover under the forks of the motorcycle and you can see where the small vacuum hose runs. I rerouted this through the opposite side left if you're looking at it from the front of the bike to gain a little, a little more length. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that just because I'm not going to shoot it through the air filter side. I'm gonna put it on this nipple over here. Um, also, it says uh, number nine, step number nine is plug the small vacuum hose onto the small connection of the front or rear carb boot. This will let your, this will let you still have timing on your bike. And that is very important. So let me show you where I'm gonna connect mine. Mine's gonna be on this nipple right here, right behind the breather. So if you can see, it's a little blurry. It won't focus, there you go. You can see it right there, and that's where I'm going to connect mine from the pet cock to that nipple. Something like this. Here's the hose right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a uni coil as well so it won't be bending. There's our nipple, and it goes connected to our pet cock right there. We got the important part on, which is that hose right there. Um, there's a step number 10 that was from the forum. Uh, my bike doesn't have it. I'm not sure if it's an older bike or a newer bike or a different model. But it says, next we can remove the clamps that hold the half inch chrome lines to the engine. After the clamps are loosened, these should come right off. It showed a picture, and it showed a picture uh, pointing down here in like this area. I don't have lines that go there. But, I mean, if you guys do on your bike, be my guest and do that part. It says, for, and then step 11, now for the fun part, to cap these connections, um, use vacuum plugs that you can either buy at Harbor Freight, you can buy on AutoZone, whatever place you want to go. And um, so we're going to go ahead and skip those steps just because I don't have those connections. Uh, there's a uh, step number 12, which is just a checklist. Uh, the most important, small vacuum holes from the sensor connected to small connection on the front carb boot. Um, make sure you guys have that connected. Or, like I did, I have it in the rear, which is this guy right here from the petcock to the rear manifold. Um, yeah, so the large vacuum port on the front carb boot plugged which is the front on this side. Let's walk over here. Don't mind the mess. These guys right here. Let me zoom in a little bit. I have them both plugged, but it's your choice if you want to use the rear one. I plugged both of these, or you can use this one um, if you want to use that front. Um, the two half inch exhaust ports plugged or connected I don't have those, so you guys could do that if you need it. Uh, unused vacuum lines removed from between the carbs, which are completely gone. As you can see, these are just my fuel lines. Um, then it says that the backfire is gone. So if you guys want to go ahead and turn on your bike at this moment, you guys can go ahead. I'm not going to turn mine on just because I have more... Uh, problems with it I'm gonna fix them I'm on the in the process if you guys saw my post on Facebook you guys saw that I was broken down but we will get to that point um, 
yeah go ahead and turn on your bikes make sure you guys read the description I will put uh, all the details that I have written down uh, check them out and uh, enjoy